Hi, I'm Kent. I've been playing around with some mason stain inside of my slip to make colored clay. I've had some pretty cool effects here, but all of those have used just one single color of mason stain. I know you can actually mix different mason stains together to generate different colors as well. So I'm going to try that out in this video. I'm going to mix some of the slip I have together and form some new colors. Here are some slips with mason stains. These are leftovers from my experiments when I was looking at different percentages of mason stains. I think these are about 4%, although I've added some slip into them, so they're probably a little bit off. Uh, these yellows are actually the same. It was just very full, so I split it amongst two different tubs so I could mix it up better. And I have a blue and a black. So I think one of the ones I want to make is green. So I'll probably mix these two together. And then I think I'm going to darken up the yellow with a little bit of black, although I worry about completely overwhelming yellow, so I probably won't add too much black. I also thought about making a darker blue. So off camera, I have another blue that has a little bit more mason stain in it, so I might mix those together. And in the category of completely unreproducible, I'm not going to measure any of this. I'm just going to pour it in. Do we think that's going to be green? It's looking a little green. It's really hard to tell when the slip's wet, so I think this is going to be one of those we'll find out in the end. And then we have the same yellow, and I'm going to add just a little bit of black to it. Again, I'm worried about completely overwhelming it, so. All right, so we have uh, blue and yellow, so probably a green. We have, we have yellow and black, so a darker yellow. I want to put a little bit of black into the blue to make it darker. All right, so I just pulled off my shelf the 8% by weight blue mason stain. I'm going to mix that with the remainder of this 4% here. And there's still a bunch of slip hiding off in the bottom, so I'm going to use my spatula. All right, that's most of it. I'll get the rest later. And we'll add some black. About that much. All right, so this should be a darker blue. All right, so we've got three new colors. Uh, let's go ahead and slip cast some pots. All right, so here are the three molds I'm going to use. So this is the green. Maybe. This is the darker yellow and this is the darker blue. I may not have enough of this one, so I may just top it up with regular slip. We'll see. Well, it seems I had just the right amount for that one. This one I'm pretty sure I have enough, so this should be pretty easy. And last but not least, blue. Oh, so close. So first I'm going to rock this around so I get coverage of all the sides. So now there's a little bit of blue covering everything up. Now I'm going to pour a regular slip right in the middle to bring up the level. Okay, so that's diluted the slip, but I'm hoping the part on the outside, the edge that you'll see, 
will be the same color. Who knows? Experiment. So you guys know the drill next. Let them sit, pour out the slip, let it dry a little bit more, demold them. All right, I think these have all released from their molds, so I'm going to see if I can pull them out. That one's still pretty soft. Now let's see if I can get this one. It wants to come. There we go. Number two. So that's the green, that's the darker yellow, and then we have the darker blue. One of the things you'll see is there's actually a little bit of marbling on the inside, which is pretty cool. That's from when I poured in the extra just regular slip to get the volume up high enough. This one's not quite ready yet, so we'll give it another minute and come back. All right, and the last one. Sure they all are. Next up we'll let them dry a little bit more, clean them up, and then we will fire them and see what color they actually turned out. So here are the pots out of the bisque fire. You can see them a little bit better. This one here is the yellow, the green, and then the darker blue. Obviously these haven't fired yet so the colors haven't fully developed and the colors will also change when I glaze them. I have my clear glaze mixed up and my pots are going to go for a swim. So if this was a mug, I could just dip it in. It would displace the glaze, but since it's not, I'm going to put my finger over the top and then just go down until maybe there's, I don't know, a quarter of an inch left. Oh, and the other thing I need to do is wipe it off so there's no dust on it and gets the bisque square just a little bit wet. Okay, perfect. So time to go for a swim. Looks good. Okay, so these next two pots are too big. This one is too wide. And this one is too tall. So I'm going to use my tray here to pour the glaze on. Same thing, wipe it down. I think I'm going to leave the bottom of this one unglazed, so I'm just going to shoot for the edges here. Go ahead and sponge the bottom off here. Okay, so that's the first pass of getting the glaze back off. We'll see we ran in the bottom here. I think I'm going to sponge that out because otherwise it'll run down into the middle. All right, that looks better. So there's the inside and then the outside. It's a small spot of mist here, so I'm just going to dip it down. Last up is the blue one, same thing. Here's the blue one. Again, I think I'll need to do a quick cleanup pass, but it's all glazed. 
and then recover all of this glaze. Okay, I'll let these dry, touch up the glaze a little bit, and then they'll go into the glaze firing. All right, here are the pots out of the glaze firing. So this one is obviously the blue. So it is the blue with a little bit of black. It just darkened it up a little bit. I think that one turned out pretty well. These two are much more kind of earth toned. The yellow here with a little bit of black in it darkened up quite a bit. It's almost a brown now, which I wasn't quite expecting. It's always hard to tell when these things are still wet to exactly what color to expect. So I wasn't quite sure, and that's what that turned out to be. And when I was doing these, I didn't measure anything, so it would be basically impossible to recreate this color. But it was a fun experiment. And then the green as well. So here is that one. I think it turned out pretty well. There's a little bit of marbling that happened in this one. I didn't quite get all the slip mixed together, so there's a little bit of yellow peeking through. So I think that experiment was relatively successful. I wound up with some interesting new colors. They were a little bit harder to predict because they were mixed of two different stains together. I suspect the right thing to do if you wanted, say, a green, for instance, is to just go ahead and get a green mason stain. But I had leftover slips, so I wanted to try it out. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. Thanks.